All right, guys, what's going on? My name is Ollie Ward. Welcome back to the Ollie Ward channel. This is a bit of a different one. It's a live Leeds United transfer news. As always, guys, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new. And I'm joined by the man himself, Joe from Just Joe Football Show. How you doing, my friend? Good man, thank you very much for for bringing me on. Very tired, mate, but this is what it's like during the transfer windows. Is that Leeds you know? draining you out of all them signings yeah. they're making? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, guys. So thank you guys for joining in the live, and also if you're watching this after it's gone live, uh, like I say, get your comments in and all that. So thank you everyone for joining the chat so far, but. I want this to be a bit of a debate, Joe, because I can see you're kind of on the side of remain positive Leeds fans. You know, there will be a signing in the door. I'm similar, but I do want to play that devil advocate because why, why, you know, fans should be maybe worried or we'll just have a little chat. And I want to go through the latest Leeds United transfer news uh, as of today. So today is Monday, 29th of January. And I want to start off with something that Fabrizio Romano tweeted out earlier, Joe, uh, the Chris Mepham bid rejected. Uh, from mm. Bournemouth. Um, what's, what's your thoughts on that? Do you think he would have been a, you know, a decent player for Legion? Will we still be going into uh, like in for him? What are your thoughts? Um, I, I think the positives I have to take from it, the fact that that Leeds United are still active, um, you know, because people will tell you they're not. Um, and I hope, you know, some people that are what I would consider negative are taking a little bit of um, confidence from the fact that we're moving for him. Do we need him? Um, see, I think it's old information that Fabrizio's just got hold of now. Because if you remember when we were linked to Chris Meppham, it was a couple of weeks back now, and mm, there was this woman yeah. and our in over Charlie. Uh, where does Chris Meppham play? He plays on the right side. He wasn't going to come to Leeds to play instead of Rodon. So I almost feel like maybe he'd have been a backup. So I'm not too fussed about losing out on Chris Meppham. But the um, positive thing for me, Ollie, is that the club are active, regardless of what people are trying to. Trying to spin um, mm. because the club are active. They're trying to make deals done. Do you think, I, I mean, I've been quite vocal of the fact that it could be one or two players in this team get injured and this could look like a completely different lead side. Are you on board with that or, or, or do you believe that I'm talking talking rubbish? No, I think in key areas, yeah. You've Just to look at fullback, um, I think if if Jamie Shackleton's asked to play right back week on week, it ain't a good look, if I'm being mm. totally honest. So... If Archie was to be out long term, that would be frustrating, of course. I think, you know, from midfield, we're fine. Up to the up to the top man in Bamford, I think we're fine. Although, you know, if Bamford got injured, could we be looking at an issue there? But even still, let's not forget, before Bamford came in, we were still scoring goals. You know, we might not have looked as well, but, you know, Piro has like six, seven goals by that point, I think. Um, so we can still so score goals. So the issues are defensively... Um, you know, you don't want a long-term injury to someone like Rodon because it doesn't matter who's your second in charge. You, you lose something anyway. Mm. Um, but, yeah, the main worry is full-back because we've got two left-backs and if we could rely on them, I'd be more than happy with us not signing a left-back. But I worry, due to their injury history, that they break down, at which point then what are we doing at left-back? Are we playing Strout there? Mm. Um, who's, who's injured? So it's just the full-back areas for me. Anywhere else is a is a nice to have for me, Oli. I think okay. the necessities are, are full-backs. All right, fair enough. And just to quickly touch on Chris Meffin before we we move uh, away from that. If he was to to come in, would you be? Do you think that's a a solid championship signing? Do you think that shows ambition, or do you think that's a safe sort of signing? Like I, I'm, yeah. I'm what, what what are you thinking? I think safe. I think it's safe. I wouldn't say it's ambitious. I think going for the likes of Nico Williams, Ben Godfrey, other names that uh, ben, uh, what's he's called uh, Davis at Spurs. Mm, ben, um, Davis. Yeah. ben Davis. It is Ben. I, I was trying to question myself, <laughs> but um, yeah, they're really ambitious and they're ones that you go, wow, a bit like Joe Rodon, you mm. know. Um, but no, Mepham's just a little bit meh. Mepham is meh, you meh, know what I mean? Meh. So, he puts yeah. the meh yeah. in meh. Meh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so Leeds aren't completely out of the race, obviously, for him. We've had a bid rejected, um, but we'll, we'll just see how that one moves on. But as of right now, that is not a thing. I want to talk about, you talk about sort of left-back cover and defensive cover. Leo Hielder off to Sunderland. Obviously, his medical is due to be in the next uh, day or two. It's three defenders out, no defenders in so far. Do you think that's a good move for for the? What, do you think that's a good move for the club, the player? What is your what's your thoughts on that one? 
I haven't seen enough Ricky Elder, but I do a show called The White Rose Rivals, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think Leo was decent in preseason. Just my opinion. Um, and having spoke to a Rotherham fan about Hilda, he's a player that's decent at this level, but shouldn't be in a top six side. I'm surprised, you know, that that Sunderland have picked him up. Um, so wait and see though, because look, they've they've got a good history with young players. They brought in Trey Hume, they brought in. Um, you know, Niall Huggins, they've done well with Jack Clark. So let's wait and see. But listen, at the end of the day, we've made a profit on him. He wasn't in the squad. I know, you know, it's free defenders going and non in, but them players were in the squad. Luke Kaling's not making the bench. Leo's not making the bench. And less said about Spence, the better because he came with extra stuff. But yeah, I don't think we've lost anything from that. Of course, we've lost warm bodies, but yeah. in terms of a first 11 when everyone's fit, they're not even touching bench. So. Do you think it, uh, players that are not signed for Leeds United, like the, the likes of Chris Meppham and uh, other players being linked with Leeds, do you think they look at the the lack of minutes that the substitutes get under Daniel Farker and do you think they think, how do I get into this first team? Or do you think that's kind of Leeds fans looking into it a bit? It depends on the player. Like, I would question... Yeah, it depends on the player because let's take David Brooks. This is what my head, and this this is just how I work out. Let's say we were in for David Brooks, right? David Brooks wants to leave Bournemouth mm-hmm. because he's not getting minutes or not getting enough minutes, right? So he's he is not going to opt for Leeds United as much as he backs himself because if he's behind James. It's going to be hard for him to usurp James. However, other players, the likes of Godfrey, etc. I think the reason they're leaving is not through one of not getting minutes. It's, it's almost like they're surplus to requirements. There's a different, there's different aspect because Bournemouth didn't want Brooks to go, but ultimately he's knocked on the door and said, "I just want to play." Do you know what I mean? So the club have gone. Right, okay, we'll we'll accept that. He isn't then going to go to Leeds United because the thing is with Brooksdale, there's no option or obligation. So he's literally going back. So it's just so he can play some fucking minutes, bro. Mm. Do you know what I mean? At Leeds United, what's the point when there is a chat? He'll have been given assurances from Southampton, like, yes, you will play you. But like someone like a Godfrey who's not really pushing or banging the door down because he wants minutes, he's just not being played. I think that's different because you then have to say to them, like, do you back yourself? Do you back mm. yourself to get into the team? Because that has to come into it as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. um, yeah. So it de- it depends on the player, the circumstance, doesn't it? Because some will say, "Well, I'm better than him, so I'm, I'll 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 beat him anyway." Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I think actually, if you to 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 counter that, um, kind of a good argument of that is the whole Willie Nonto situation this season. On paper, if I asked you the start of the uh, season, Willie Nonto or Dan James, you're taking Willie Nonto. I I, yeah. I personally think and. It shows that, you know, you can think you're this type of player, but if you're not performing, you won't start. And Daniel yeah. Farker's been quite clear about that. Uh, you touched on David Brooks there uh, on his way to Southampton loan deal. D- do you think we've we've missed out on much there? Or because you can't, I saw you tweeting, you actually thought yeah. maybe we were maybe going to yeah. get Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I just felt, I think the 49ers or the recruitment team are playing the long game. They're waiting for dominoes to fall and mm. they're hoping that. You know, let's say if we look at Chris Meppen, for example, say the genuine interest is still there. What's to say that on the final day, Bournemouth don't get offered a centre-back that they're willing to take and then they're on the phone to Leeds United saying you can have Meppen. So I felt like something like that was going to happen with Brooks. Mm-hmm. And I felt, and when I've seen Southampton were getting bent and I was thinking, well, we're the only other club that seems to have been linked to uh, to um, to Brooks. So I think we're landing. But, the, the, you know, they've, they've brought him in and, uh, yeah, there's, I guess, no, there's nothing we can we, we we can do about that. But do I think we've lost out on something? I don't think it'll have started, but I like the profile of the player, uh, a left-footed right winger. He offers us something different. Nonto's struggling out on that right side. Does that then give you an opportunity to play him as second sub and play Nonto more on the left, potentially, um, where I think Nonto would shine more? Um, so, yeah, it's clear they're looking at, uh, a profile of player, and I thought David Brooks would have added to us, yeah. But again, I think if he was given the opportunity, he picked Southampton. I just felt they might have moved on from mm-hmm. his signing because of this Benson stuff. But yeah, yeah, and yeah, no, I, I think you make a great point, and you kind of everything that I thought about him as well 
you've you've hit the nail on the head really um about brooks and realistically he's not the sort of target we need right now like you've been no. saying we need yeah. defenders we need right backs we need left backs and that moves me nicely on to hashioka again another target leeds united like the look of and he looks well he's pretty much confirmed here we go he's he's going to luton that one really for me again i'm not going to sit here and say i watch belgium football or i've watched the japanese you know national team and everyone looks good in the compilation video bloody hell rasmus Ooh. christensen look like danny alves <laughs> but you know what i mean is, is that one that you look at and go because I, I saw the price it's right two million euros or something yeah. like that's that's yeah, nothing that's nowadays right. is it nothing. so is that is that one you looked at like i mean it came in last night was that one you looked at and thought come on ladies we should we should have really gone for that one um, I don't know anything about the player like you, do you know what I mean? So I couldn't tell you if, yes, we sh you know, we should have signed him. But again, I just take positives from it that, that, mm -hmm. that Leeds United were active. Um, you know, a lot of people might look at it and say, but it's Luton and we're Leeds, but this is Premier League and we're Championship, you know. Um, even if they're going to get relegated, putting yourself in a window for six months can do wonders for your career. Um, you know, he was willing to drop to the Championship and not go to the Bundesliga to come to Leeds before Luton entered the race. So that shows you the English games just watched yeah. all over the world, isn't it? It's huge. Premier League even more so uh, than the Championship. But again, what it, what it shows me is that we're active. We still want to write back. That's positive because then what that does is free up Gray to go into midfield uh, when needed, which gives us more bodies there. So uh, excited by that. And what it also does is shows me, Ollie, just how quick things can change because yesterday mm. lunchtime or morning, he was coming to Leeds. By lunchtime, he was on his way to loot and yeah. it went bam, bam. So those that say, you know, this is where I take my confidence from, is not, or I have an argument against those that say we're leaving it too late. What we're doing, it's like, well, that changed within a couple of hours. So, mm. what you know, it, it, this is how the game works. I, I'm not an insider or like that, neither are you, right? But you, no. we know how the transfer game works. Look at look at the deadline day, Rafinha signing. They get a got oh, call off yeah. Deco. He's available. Okay, we'll have him. Mm. And then by midnight, he's sat having Gravelys. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, it changes like that, Ollie. That's why yeah. I'm a bit of like, relax, you know? Yeah. That's just me, though. That's no, no, I, I completely understand because that that whole um, you know Hashioka situation could have been Luton were favourites and we came in. You know that could have easily yeah. been the other yeah. way around, couldn't it? Um, yeah, exactly. and, and just to counter your point, I know I know you're calm, and I wanted to to uh, address some fans that that might not be, and you've kind of touched on it there because I, I feel like fans do have a right to be a bit frustrated that it's taken 29 days and we've still got no one in. I, I genuinely do. Um, because I don't want to come on to the my channel. I know you don't want to come on to yours saying another rumour, another transfer mm. loss. We want to say we've got bases through the door. And obviously yeah. it's showing we've got, you know, we are active. Uh, but is it is it too little too late? Or do you think there's things going on but behind the scenes? And why should everyone in the chat, there's over 100 people in here, smash that like button and subscribe and all that stuff. Why should they still remain positive because of course when you don't sign anyone there's a lot of negative comments and they'll outweigh yeah. the positive ones give me some positivity what, what from now to, yeah. to the window yeah um, so well, why why yeah why should you be positive yeah. why are we going to make signings okay so we need bodies daniel fark has uh, continued to uh, push that narrative that rhetoric you know since the start of the window i'll give you i'll give you two example i'll give you an example of a board willing to do business and a board not willing to do business off okay. the top of my head, right? Last season, Jesse Marsh spoke about needing bodies, right? We need bodies in a number of key areas. He had a date set for a meeting with Andrea Radrazani and the recruitment team, okay? We needed a left-back. He said this. He had his meeting with the recruitment team. The next press conference, you can watch my reactions, his rhetoric was, well, actually, at left-back, we have Furpo, we have this player, and also Struick can play there. Mm. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. In the space of a few days, your rhetoric's changed. We needed a left back. You've had a meeting with the transfer people. And now you're saying we don't need a left back. We've got bodies that can play there. Daniel Parker, since before the transfer window to his most recent conversation, has maintained throughout that Leeds United still needs bodies. That hasn't waned. That has not changed. He has admitted it's difficult to do in January, which we can all agree with. Mm. But he has maintained the same narrative the same um conversation around transfers all the way through all the way through what it also why i'm confident is because only 24 hours ago we nearly had a japanese international right back through the door okay Very true. only just 24 hours ago um also we've had two articles today one by graham smith who says that confidence 
outside of the club and within the club. Thinks they'll get two, one or two, he said. He also mentioned and name checked Ben Godfrey, Charlie Taylor, and Connor Roberts, which means they're there. Baron Cross, also around the um the Japanese right backs deal, mentioned that the club are active. This shows us they are active. Now that gives me enough confidence. Also, I tell myself, like, I'm not playing like I'm not my confidence comes from the way they operated in the summer as well, right? I was losing my mind in the summer. I felt I have reason for losing my mind because I felt it was a continuation from the same board. However, what we did see is the way that they operated and they brought in Ampadu, yeah, and they brought in Rodon and they bring in Gruyev and they bring in these players. And I go, do you know what? I have enough confidence now in this board that they will get it right. If they don't, then I will be outraged. I will be annoyed. Like, this isn't me just suddenly changing. It's because I've continuously maintained that we have to, it would be negligent not to. That doesn't mean that when the window shuts, if we haven't, I'm going to go, it's all right, we've got enough, because I don't I don't think we have. Um, but but I'm confident that they will rectify that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I hope that should give you my reasons as to why you don't have to be on board with that but mm -hmm. that's why i'm um still confident man still confident no I, and and you, you answer my question for me. my next question i was going to say and i was going to say if we didn't if by some sort of disaster we didn't sign anyone you've kind of said you would be outraged because i oh, think a, a, a one or one or two injuries to say ampadu or roden it doesn't look brilliant. That, that's all no. I can say. And, and we've still got talented players. We do. But I think we've got talented names. Doesn't necessarily mean they can come in and do... Example, I keep using Willie Nonto and I feel bad because I keep using his name. But again, I said to this, I think in your stream, everyone who doesn't support Legion United doesn't watch him week in, week out like me and yourself do. So why don't you start on Willie Nonto? Like, yeah. he's, he's, he's brilliant. He was brilliant in the Prem. And you're like, yeah, but... You haven't watched him this season. He, he's he's not better than Dan James this season. He's not better than Somerville. So we've got the names. It's just if they can, you know, start clicking and stuff. And I, I personally didn't see the, the Graham Smith article about the Ben Godfrey and Connor Roberts and, and, and things like that. And yeah. I'm I'm with you that I'm optimistic that we like, I, I think it's it's sort of we have to in a way. And Farker knows that, and I think the club knows that as well. Um, but it's a thing where I'm not like if fans are getting a bit annoyed, I can see why. If we're the ninth day in, I'd say calm down. The fact we're twenty nine days in, I think they they have a right. Some fans to be a bit be a bit cheesed and say, you know, we're not signing anyone. But again, I do respect your optimism, and I, I'm in a similar boat. With you, I do think we will sign some face in, and I don't think it will be hardly anyone. You know, that has been targeted. It'll be one of them that's out right. of nowhere. Um, well, let's be honest. No one had heard of uh, Hashioko. No, and and, that, and, and that's what I, I do love in a transfer window that. Everyone goes, yeah, I know he's brilliant. I, I watched him, blah, blah, blah. And they haven't. And I'm always very honest in my videos where I say, don't know nothing about him. Go check out a highlight compilation. I'm, I'm sure he's all right in that. Um, <laughs> but, but Joe, I mean, it's... When, when do you think we make the first sign? Do you think it's tomorrow? I mean, because we've only got a few days left. It's got to be tomorrow, right? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm hoping that, you know... Yeah, I hope it's tomorrow. I hope it, <laughs> but I'm just, I, I couldn't tell you. I don't have the answer. That's the that. thing. And, and let me just say as well like, like everyone's entitled to be a fan however they want in it, right? Like, you can react however you want. But it's just like when it's what really frustrates me, it's like it's Farkas' fault. It's his fault. There are a number of factors as to why a deal doesn't get done. It doesn't mean the club aren't trying their best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I just think some of it, I, listen, I've had 49ers, you know, they're no good. You know, they shouldn't be at the Super Bowl. They should be here. Parag Marate is not, yeah, he's the man that signed the checks, but we've got a recruitment team for a reason. Farkas sleepwalking us to the playoffs is the is the funniest. It's like you do realise that we are the second informed team after 15 games and a run beaten in January 2024. Yeah. So this whole narrative has to stop. And, and it almost feels like, what I've seen, right, this is what's pissing me off. For whatever reason, there is a section of Leeds fans that dislike Daniel Farker, right, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, okay? And it's gone from he can't handle egos, he doesn't use the young players, he's trying to bin off Creswell, Archie's not a right back, just play him in his right position, will you? Uh, all these sort of things, just play Pirro in the nine, will you? Everything. And do you know what? 
he's end up being right in every single scenario. So now the latest one is, well, he's happy with his lot, so therefore he doesn't want no one else. And I'm like, well, that's not true either, is it? Because we tried to sign a right box 24 hours ago. We tried to sign Chris Meppham. So just because, you know, the mad thing is, I've seen a great stat earlier on, just, just to further just, just ram home this point. Since 2004, 2005, there's been two, mini, two managers with the best win percentages in the championship. OK, minimum 50 games managed at the top of the trees. Marcelo Bielsa with 57 percent. Second is Daniel Parker with 53 percent. So anyone that wants to tell us that we ain't got the right man for the job, they need to put down the pipe. Sorry. Clip that. Clip that. Someone. <laughs> I, you know, it's brilliant. I, I think I think, you know, bang on. I, I, I quite rightly, I think in the, the back end of December saying I wasn't ever saying Daniel Farker out, but I was questioning what is going on. And I wasn't just questioning Daniel Farker, I was questioning the team. I was questioning, okay, what is going on? And I know we kind of had discussions about, you know, subs too late and all this thing. But I think when it comes to blaming him for the transfer window, I think it's Why very just, you've got an agenda at, at that 100%. point, isn't it? Yeah, you've got yeah. an agenda at that point. And uh, I want to know what people are thinking in the chat. I'm not going to be here for, for too much longer, only a few more minutes. But do you think uh, we make signings before the end of the window? If so, how many? Um, and Joe, I'll, I'll quick. You think it's going to be one or two? Do two. You th okay. And what positions do you think? Right and left back. Yes, that's my th thought process. But it could well be a centre back that could do do two jobs. Do you know what I mean? But I do yeah. think we'll get. I think we'll get. I think we'll get a proper right back, and I think we get a centre back that could potentially play left back. And if we got one, and it was Ben Godfrey who can play all three, then I'm okay with that as well. Yeah, I, I, I personally, I think out of everyone we've been linked with, Ben Godfrey has got me the most excited. To be fair, Tim, I, I think he, I think he's a, a cracking player, and I was seeing a lot of people. Do, again, a lot of people just, I don't know, we just can't ever be happy with any sort of. My thing anything. is, I get it, like Ryan Giles narrative. Why do we want Luton's rejects? Goes to Southampton. We've missed out on Ryan yeah, yeah. Giles, and it's like, why, why are you? Why are you angry? Why are you yeah. angry when you didn't want him in the first place? Yeah, no. Crazy. Well, Joe, I mean, that's the latest Leeds United transfer news. A lot of uh, things have been rejected from Leeds United today. But like we said, the transfer window has still got a few more days. Um, I'll be uploading. I'm sure Joe will as well. Going live whenever something drops. Uh, you guys already know, Joe. But if you don't, it's at the Just Joe Football Show. Thank you, Joe, for coming on. Um, Thank you for And yeah, me. guys, smash that like button. If you're watching this live, if you're not watching this live, Smash it, leave it in the comments down below and subscribe if you're new. I've been Ollie Ward. You guys have been excellent and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheery. Oh.